Welcome to SAU News, a weekly broadcast brought to you by the School of Journalism and Communications. I'm Charles Kemek. And I'm Smyrna Pass. A motion to sync Southern's academic calendar with two sister colleges was approved last Monday by University Senate. Two senators opposed the motion, otherwise received widespread approval. The proposed would link Southern's calendar with Southwestern Adventist University and Union College. Under the plan, students would require to attend school earlier in the fall, but would get an extra week off for Thanksgiving. Other changes affect spring break and May graduation. The University Board of Trustees is expected to make the final decision on the calendar in its February meeting. Southern's annual fall festival event took place this past weekend. As I found out Sunday, students took advantage of this year's closer venue. Basketball was one of many activities offered by the roughly 30 rooms run by various student organizations. True You even offered a car smash. We're a brand new club this year, so we're trying to raise money to sponsor our events. Um, True You at SAU tries to do an event for students once a month um, and just provide an environment for students to be their True You, where they can be fully accepted and loved. Upon arrival, attendees were given 10 tickets which could be used at the various booths. Even without the traditional hayride, there was something positively different in the air about this year's fall festival. The last several years, the fall festival was held at the Hidden Hills Farm, but this year it will be held here on campus at the Student Park. As you will see behind me, students are preparing for tonight's festivities. The Welcome Valley Boys provided the music as students, faculty, and even kids took in all the fall festival had to offer. Okay, this year has a lot more interactive activities. Behind you there is a, um, like a blow-up obstacle course thing. We normally don't have that. We have a new bungee activity towards the back. We have laser tag. We have Nerf gun wars. We've never had that before. Um, and just because it, it is our facility, we're able to do a lot more with it. And we have deep fried Twinkies. That's and, new. And deep fried Oreos. This is America. In addition to deep fried treats, SA provided pretzels, cotton candy, candy apples, popcorn, <laughs> and freshly squeezed apple juice. We are PRSSA, Public Relations Student Society of America, and we are sending kisses. Hershey kisses, yes, yes. We're sending it out to loved ones, maybe admirers, we don't know. We could start a marriage here, it's Southern. There was light rain a couple minutes before the event began, but the moderately cool temperatures this year seem to erase any feelings of sympathy for Duncan, the SA president. According to Shanti, SA handed out 8,000 tickets. What was your favorite part of Fall Fest? Post your comments to our Twitter feed at SAU News 1. We may even use your next tweet in our next broadcast. Shiny old vehicles were spotted on campus Sunday during Alumni Homecoming. The 10th annual Antique Car Show featured perfect weather and beautiful cars. Classic cars like the 1960s Ford Mustang and two Shelby Cobras drew a lot of attention from young and old. You could find pickup trucks, hot rods, and two Sudabakers from the 1960s. We found a Model A Ford from 1931, and the oldest of all cars was a Model T from 1914. If you like to cook, you may wish to consider Southern's new certificate in culinary arts. SAU News reporter Nathan Sturgis is with us in studio today to talk about the new vegetarian culinary program. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. So Nathan, what kind of classes do they offer? Well, they offer a lot of vegetarian related classes, but one in particular was specifically related to raw food preparation. Earlier this week, I went to the Collegedale Community Church to see what was cooking. The culinary program at Southern is in its inaugural year, and the clear focus is on healthy living and service. Classes are taught in short, intense segments. This segment is all about raw food. So you can do it with just a chef knife, cutting board, and... Chef Sherry Yoey teaches students how to take uncooked vegetables, fruits, and nuts and transform them into culinary creations. She is passionate about helping people learn the benefits of eating raw. You can eat 100% raw and be very satisfied, and it isn't just eating carrot sticks and celery sticks and salads. 
Her own experience has given her the drive to serve others. I'm very passionate because in 1993 I had a debilitating illness hit, but when I added a high percentage of raw food to my diet, that's when I went over the top with good energy. It was amazing recovery, so I have an amazing passion to share with others that you can be healthy too. But it doesn't mean that your blood's flowing fast. The Vegetarian Culinary Arts Program has attracted a lot of students that are really interested in mission and taking their food preparation to a whole new level. For one student, just getting here was a challenge. My friend had called me and told me, hey, Southern's doing a cooking program. And I was like, cool. So I pitched the idea to the parents. They're like, no, you can't go to Southern just because your friend's going there. Fine. Three, uh, three days before the program starts, I get a call from my mom. Did you know Southern's doing a cooking program? You should go. Like, Thanks, Mom. But Connor has big dreams. But the end goal would hopefully be a, uh, a television show, with the majority of the focus being on the science aspects. Emily is in the program because she can't stand the idea of a desk job. With the culinary program, I'm going to have a career that's going to be focused on being active. It's going to give me a reason to get out of bed every day and work for somebody else. She sees culinary arts as a mission in itself. We've got the student missions on campus. I mean, why not come here for a year? You learn just as much, and it's a great service skill. It's a good opportunity, and I'm glad I went for it. Not only does the program give you a great sense of purpose, but also job security because of the demand for workers within the Adventist education and health systems. If you're thinking about switching your major, this might be an option for you. For SAU News, I'm Nathan Sturgis. Some students are hoping to use their new skills to open up a bakery or start their own cooking show. Does this program only focus on vegetarian cuisine? What if someone was offered a job and they had to cook meat? There are actually a few classes related to meat preparation just to maintain the viability of the program. In fact, a few Adventist institutions still prepare meat for their clients. Interesting. Why does this class um, take place at school or church, I'm sorry, rather than here on campus? Well, it's such a new program that the infrastructure required is very expensive. And so this is just a transitionary period to make sure that it's a viable program. What if students don't want a certificate and they just want to take the class? Yeah, they can actually do that. In fact, students can enroll in food preparation during winter semester. It's a, offered at 9.30, Tuesday and Thursday in the Wellness Center. Were you able to um, sample any of the, the dishes? You know, I was so focused on getting the story and everything, it just didn't happen. But it looked really good. Well, thanks, Nathan. Yes, thank you for coming. Yeah, good to be here. Returned student missionaries seem to be everywhere on campus. From the promenade to convocation, SMs were sharing their stories as part of Student Missions Week. One thing I learned is that student missionaries often come back with a stronger relationship with God. Uh, each day we'll be giving out something. We also have juice in a bag here. Have you ever had that? Returned student missionary Chris Janesco is handing out juice to everyone who will listen. In Egypt where I was, they um, would have that a lot. And I think it's just a cheaper way than using cups, I think. So if you're interested in having some, I can get you. Here in America, you won't find juice served in a bag. Stuff like this, you don't see uh, juice in a bag every day. SMs are trying to make the point that when you go overseas, you must experience new things. Mmm, that's quite tasty. Janetsko taught English in Egypt last year. Now back on campus, he said student mission work is much broader than people think. Um, I think student missions emphasis week is important because it helps the students on our campus. Many people don't realize that student missions isn't just like pastoral work or teaching work. Um, they can do stuff that has to do with graphic design or construction. Last year, Southern sent out 75 student missionaries. This year, 79 students will be sent abroad. Melissa Rodas is currently teaching in Thailand. In a Skype interview, she told us that the language barrier has made it tough to communicate with others. But sometimes that can be a blessing. I think people should be student missionaries because God brings you to a point of loneliness and isolation. And it becomes a blessing because God becomes the only friend you can absolutely trust in. The University Student Missions Club is raising money by selling t-shirts for $10. All the proceeds go to help fund student missionaries.
If you're seriously thinking about serving as an SM, former student missionaries will be sharing their stories and displaying souvenirs this Sabbath in the Student Center. With football intramurals coming to a close, SAU News reporter Cole Taylor went to the fields to see how the season has been going. This football intramural season is almost over, but the competition is just heating up. There are a total of 52 teams in seven different leagues, which means there are a lot of games and a lot of players. But some students come out to the games just to watch. I'm not playing football this year, but I like coming down in the evenings and um, just sitting down at the fields and watching the games. Teams play on four different fields and games go from six to 10, four days a week. Each team has played eight regular season games over the past month and their wins and losses will decide their playoff ranking. Behind me, teams are playing their last regular season games while fighting for a good position in the playoffs. During the regular season, many teams played multiple games on the same night due to the busy schedules. The playoffs begin next week with the championship games happening on Thursday. Some people join football just for fun, but every team enters the playoffs with hopes of winning a championship. My team, Rocket Fire, we've been playing. We've lost two games, but I'm really excited. Hopefully we'll come out with the championship this year. Be sure to go down to the fields next week to cheer on your favorite team. For SAU News, I'm Cole Taylor. The next intramural sport is floor hockey, so don't miss the signups which begin this Monday. Southern's historic dollhouse has reappeared by Linwood Hall and once more is set to become someone's office for the next few months. SAU News reporter Justin jo Dustin Johnson has more. Linwood Hall is known as the oldest building on campus, but not everyone realizes that the oldest building is actually a dollhouse. In 1906, Jim Thatcher built the dollhouse for his daughter. At the time, Thatcher owned a farm that is now the university campus. In just the last few months, the dollhouse has been restored by plant services. Workers packed styrofoam peanuts in the walls for insulation, as well as painting and running electrical wiring. Now it's being designated as a memorial to Ray Lacey, Southern's landscape director from 1970 to 1993. Lacey is remembered as helping to create the promenade and beautify the campus. The dollhouse will now reside between Linwood and Daniels Hall. The dollhouse's new location offers a permanent cement pad along with electricity, heating, and air conditioning. It will also feature landscaping, and of course it has a beautiful tree right behind it. Now you may have heard about a new student life center in the works. Well, Chris Carey, vice president for advancement, has decided that to encourage the history of the dollhouse, he will move his office into the dollhouse until a goal has been met for the student center project. What's exciting about this too is it's, it's not taking tuition money. This is something a donor gave us some money to develop a legacy or alumni gardens, and this is being incorporated into that vision. Kerry won't reveal what it will take before he decides it's time to move back to Linwood, but he hopes the renewed attention on the dollhouse will help raise funds for the university's capital campaign for new buildings. The dollhouse is wired for Wi-Fi, so it's already after its 21st century makeover. For SCU News, I'm Dustin Johnson. Kerry says that after he moved out, he hopes that the dollhouse can be used as a meet and greet with Dr. Beats, as well as a place for prayer. The Student Park Cave opens this Saturday from 1.30 to 5. SAU News reporter Dustin Johnson will go spelunking and report his adventure in our next broadcast. Also, next week is packed with events related to Wellness Week. We'll have the story. That's it for this edition of SAE News. We remind you that this is a joint production of the TV Studio Production class and the TV News Performance class. I'm Smyrna Paz. And I'm Charles Kamak. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.